Fix Something continues to be your local election headquarters, and as voters prepare to cast their ballots in the primaries, we want to make sure that you are informed on these candidates and the issues. This morning, we're speaking with Democratic mayoral candidate Sean Donovan, who joins us in person, in studio. So good to see you for the third and final round of our conversations in person. So great to be yes. in with you. Great to see you, Dan. So, Mr. Donovan, I watched you at last night at the 92nd Street Y, moderated by our Ayanna Harry. But I want to talk about the latest poll numbers that just came out yesterday. This New York One Ipsos poll um, has you at the bottom of the top contenders with 3%. You know, your father um, is a, you're one of your largest donors. He's invested more than $7 million into your campaign. But it really doesn't seem to have moved the needle much. Heading into the final stretch, are you staying in the race until Election Day? Absolutely, and I'll tell you, I'm all over the city. I'll be all over the Bronx today, Brooklyn yesterday, uh, many boroughs this weekend, feeling a lot of momentum and support. Here's the thing. We know that in mayor's races, it's these last two weeks when folks really focus in. Uh, the polling shows that about half of New Yorkers are still making up their minds, if not more. And here's the other thing that I know. The, the number one issue that we're seeing in these polls is housing, homelessness, the interaction between mental illness and violence that we're seeing on our streets. Those are the things that I've worked on for 30 years. So I bring the best experience to be able to really solve those problems yeah, for New York. That latest poll had about 16% still undecided. But I want to talk about one of the top issues in our own PIX11 News Nation Emerson College Bowl had crime at the top of the list, number one issue among people. You mentioned wanting to focus on violent crimes and guns, but what is the strategy on the ground level for speci specifically for guns? Well, look, what we know is that we're not making guns here in New York City. We're not selling them at our stores. They're coming in from rogue dealers out of state. So we need an immediate focus on gang violence, those who are running guns in the city. That's work that I did as housing commissioner partnering with the police to get guns out of our housing. But we also need to stop the flow into the city as well. Isn't that and so to build partnerships with our national law enforcement agencies, with other mayors and governors in the region, those are relationships and, and work that I've done in the past as well. Isn't that something that is already happening? They're trying to stop the flow of guns already. Would you bring back, would you say, the plainclothes anti-crime unit? Well. I don't think that this mayor has been able to build those partnerships effectively. We've seen the number of guns coming into our city spike dramatically, and we absolutely need a mayor who has the kind of relationships I do with President Biden, with our attorney general, but also with other mayors and governors to really strengthen that, to boldly go after those, those dealers. But I would also say part of the challenge we have is an epidemic of mental health. Mm -hmm. The violent crimes we're seeing on our subways, the slashings, the anti-Asian hate crimes, that's really because we have, uh, we've seen the number of people sleeping on our streets and in shelter double, and the mental health epidemic playing out is really a tragedy and has to be something the next mayor focuses on. I want to get to on. mental health in just one second, but in terms of a police commissioner, you have said that you would look elsewhere. Have, do you have a short list? Is it somebody who would be a person of color, a civilian, a woman? I absolutely believe that this is a moment for a police commissioner of color. And I do think we should be looking broadly. My experience as part of President Obama's 21st Century Policing Task Force was working with leaders like Chuck Ramsey from Philadelphia, who did remarkable work to create both safety and respect. We don't have to choose in this city. We can mm -hmm. reform policing, but also really focus on guns and violent crime to make sure that New Yorkers are safe. You mentioned President Obama a lot along the campaign trail. It's in a lot of your ads. In our PIX11 mayoral forum, you've talked about having conversations with him about this very race. When's the last time you actually spoke to President Obama? Uh, we spoke a few weeks ago. Uh, and look, I'm proud of that work. And I talk about it because there's a lot that we accomplished for New Yorkers, whether I was leading the recovery from Sandy, the work that I did to end veteran homelessness in 80 cities, uh, so I'm proud of that work. But the other thing I would say, Dan, is, you know, I, I'm a lifelong New Yorker who started working in the South Bronx and Central Brooklyn to make housing more affordable, to rebuild communities 30 years ago. And that's the record that I'm running on. Mental health is a big problem. Thrive is, an ish, is a program meant to help on the streets in terms of mental health. Would you keep Thrive? Look, the challenge with Thrive is it has not really focused on the most significant challenge that we see which is the seriously mentally ill. Those are the folks that we've seen dramatically increase on our, on our streets and in shelter. And here's what you need to do. There are two solutions to this, Dan. 
One is what we call supportive housing. It's permanent housing with on-site services that breaks the cycle of homelessness and violence. Instead, what the mayor's been investing in is uh, emergency shelters and hotels that are like putting a giant right. Band-Aid on this rather than solving it. The other thing you need to do is make sure that you're preventing the homelessness in the first place. Anytime someone leaves Rikers or the mental health wing of one of our hospitals, directed immediately to supportive housing rather than ending up on the uh, Almost out of time here, so I want to get to what something you talked about in terms of housing during our PIX11 forum. You said that those facing evictions could actually receive a check to help them remain in their homes. How much would those checks be and how long would they last? Well, this is the good news, that at a moment when we're facing the worst eviction crisis of our lifetimes, the federal government has now provided billions of dollars of aid. What we need now is a mayor who really understands how to get that to people quickly. There could be up to a year of back rent that could be available for families. So how much would a check be? It, it really depends on what the rent is, but it's a year's worth of, of payments is the, is the potential for, uh, for families. These are the programs that I built after the Great Recession that kept millions of families in their homes. We need a mayor who really understands how to prevent homelessness right now. And lastly, I want to talk about education. You said that you would mandate vaccines during our PIX11 forum for school children. What if a parent doesn't want to vaccinate their child? What happens then in September to that student? Well, look, Dan, this is something that already happens with our children. We already ma mandate vaccines for other types of, my own children have had those mm -hmm. mandates uh, for years. And so I think it's really important that we work with families who are concerned. Uh, if there's resistance, education, uh, speak to those families and try to gain their trust and make sure their children are in schools. But we can't have families that are endangering and, and risking that we have a, another explosion of, of the pandemic like we did a year ago. We've lost too many New Yorkers already, more than 30,000. We can't risk going back there. Understood. Mr. Don, I'm giving everybody equal time, so we're simply out of time this morning. But I do appreciate you coming in for our final conversation, and I'm glad it was in person. It is a pleasure yes. to be here. Thanks Thank so much, Dan. All right, and you can head on over to pix11.com slash New York elections, where you will find our vital voters, vital voters guide. That's a mouthful with more information on the candidates. We also have explainers of the new ranked choice voting system and reminders about key dates. It's all there for you.